So, uh, where we left it last time was on um, on the point of starting to talk about um, application. And in particular, we were going to start talking about uh, the cellular telephone system. So let's um, quickly review what we started talking about last time. And uh, let's, uh, let's basically um, continue to discuss how cellular applications work. <coughs> So this is a little different from uh, the first several weeks of the course where we were talking about um, the, uh, the layers of uh, data networks. Uh, so cellular telephony is based on um, is based on circuit switching rather than packet switching. So data. Uh, traveling over, uh, over TCP IP is all packet switch. Cellular telephony is circuit switch, meaning there's a dedicated circuit set up from you from one end of the network to the other. Okay, so let's um, briefly discuss um, the basic operations of, of, of cellular telephone network. So uh, as I started talking about last time, space is partitioned. cells, and each cell is served by a base station. So here's the figure that you should have in mind, so we figure one in your notes. Here is a cell. Cells, uh, we usually draw them as hexagons for reasons that I discussed last time. Basically, hexagons can all fit together on a plane. That antenna in the middle, that's the base station. <coughs> and basically, if your mobile node is within the area of space represented by that hexagon, it connects to the base station with the radio link and uh, is capable of receiving calls from that base station. The base station is connected uh, to both uh, two kinds of wired networks. One is the public switch telephone network, the usual phone system. And uh, in more modern systems, it's connected through a gateway to the internet. Data services. So we've um, we've talked a little bit about, or we talked quite a bit about how um, uh, how these data these data services work. So I've, I've said the word base station, or I've said the term base station uh, many times. And basically, a base uh, when I when I've said that, what I've meant is usually uh, a fixed antenna, a, a fixed uh, piece of radio hardware <coughs> in the middle of a cell like this. So all of the, uh, all of the, for example, network layer concepts um, like mobile IP uh, and things of that nature that require such things as foreign agents. Often I've said that can take the, the place of the base station, and this is what that would look like. So if you've ever, um, uh, I mean, base stations don't necessarily have to look like anything in particular. But if you've ever uh, driven down the 401 or something or any major highway, you've probably seen at least one of them. They're usually a fairly large tower, and at the top, what you will usually see is six antennas. So it's, it's perhaps hard to draw, but it might look like this. They'll, they will usually be these sort of square dealies like this. You have two facing in one direction, another two sort of facing in a different direction, <coughs> and another two facing in a different direction. So anything that would look like that at the top of a large tower, that's generally what a base station looks like. If, you're ever, if you were ever curious about what, uh, about what they look like. Um, there's also, um, if you walk, if you take a walk around campus, these, uh, uh, you, can, you can usually spot um, uh, base stations by the kind of antenna. So it's usually these big rectangular looking antennas, usually with a white plastic cover on them. 
Uh, I've seen a few on the Ross building, so if you take a walk back, uh, right at the top of the Ross building, there's a, there's a couple of these. And basically any, uh, any, uh, any tall building um, uh, is, is usually a good, a good candidate for putting, a, for putting a base station on. Okay, so this is a mobile telephone network. So if you connect to this base station, and your mobile starts here within this geographic area, and let's say that you are driving down the 401 indeed, and you travel outside of the, uh, the boundaries of this, of, this, uh, of this cell, presumably what's going on is you'll enter a neighboring cell that is served by a different base station. So what will happen is, as, as we've, uh, again, as we've explained, uh, especially in terms of the network layer, what will happen is this radio link will break. You will form a new radio link to this base station, and that procedure is called handoff or handover. It's actually referred to by both terms. And that's the mechanism of mobility in, uh, in cellular networks, breaking this uh, breaking this uh, radio link and forming a new one in a different cell. So um, the details of your call would be routed through the public switch telephone network to this base station from that one. So you would not notice uh, the fact that you've been handed over from base station to base station, ideal. Much like you would hopefully not notice if you were downloading a large file from here to here, uh, as we mentioned with, with mobile IP. Okay, we touched on the following last time, but let's remind ourselves. Why, why do this? Why split space into cells like this? Does anybody remember the answer? It's the bandwidth. It's, it, so um, the simple answer is the bandwidth, or the one word answer is the bandwidth. Is there a more complex answer than that? You want the whole frequency space to that's right. So basically, uh, the the idea is you have uh, you have a certain amount of bandwidth, and you want to you want to maximize the use of that bandwidth in space. So what cell, what uh, partitioning space into cells allows you to do is it allows you to reuse the entire bandwidth um, uh, from place to place. So the key idea in cellular is spatial reuse of frequency. So within a certain geographic area, you will have, uh, you will be able to allocate all of your frequencies, and you'll be able to copy that, that use of frequencies <laughs> in different areas. So the idea is that each cell will be assigned a certain range. The neighbors of that cell well, all of you assigned a different range of frequencies so that these base stations don't interfere with each other, especially if the mobile is close to the boundary. However, beyond that, you can you can re you can reuse that frequency because okay, this guy is not interfering with this guy. Um, logically, if the same frequencies are used over here, this guy would also not interfere with this guy. So basically, I can take all the frequencies I'm using in this cell copy them over here and not interfere with anything else. So two base stations. Sufficiently far apart. But not interfere with each other. use the same bandwidth. 